What does it take to be a good manager or leader? And what is it that makes them truly great? In a previous video, I discussed the difference between management, leadership, and coaching. And even though management, leadership, and coaching are different concepts, the best traits carry across all three. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look at the top 10 qualities of great managers and leaders. To kick things off, let's talk about what it means to be a leader. Leadership is the ability to get people to follow you. The best leaders understand how to influence people because they understand human nature and what drives behavior, which I call people physics. In contrast, most managers are given teams because they convince someone above them in the organization to give them a promotion, but they haven't necessarily earned the respect, the trust, or the loyalty of the team that they'll be managing. In fact, a lot of managers never even meet their team until after they get the position. Now, bad managers rely heavily on the authority that's given to them. They abuse their power and use it to put their teams in difficult situations, either intentionally or unintentionally. Good managers make good use of authority and don't abuse it. They respect the fact that they're working with people and not consumable resources. Now, great managers rarely rely on authority. Instead, they're true leaders that use their skills of influence to inspire people to take action. The second quality great managers and leaders possess is the ability to create vision. As a leader or manager, if you can't visualize the outcome, your team won't be able to achieve it. The vision you create or fail to create can either pull your team together or it can drive them apart. Vision is the foundation that great leaders use to build their followers. That's why Simon Sinek says that you should start with why. It's also why it's not enough to be able to see the vision yourself. You have to be able to communicate that vision in a way that makes it come to life for others too. Now, great managers know that if they want to create followers, their visions have to go beyond making money for shareholders and that the visions should touch people on a deeper level. The best visions are things that will change the world, like Elon Musk's vision to colonize Mars or Dr. Donald Hopkins' vision to eliminate the three and a half million annual cases of guinea worm that cause people massive pain and suffering every year. And by the way, Dr. Hopkins and the others that were fighting the guinea worm have been massively successful. In 2021, there were only 15 cases reported. And make no mistake, it takes a massive team of fully committed people to go from three and a half million annual cases to just 15 per year. And it all started with a great vision. Now the third quality of great managers and leaders is empathy. Yes, managers can get results from their teams without empathy. Leaders can even achieve great and amazing things without empathy, but that doesn't mean they're great. Empathy is the ability to understand the feelings of others, to understand their situation and to put yourself in their position. Empathy is important for two main reasons. Empathetic leaders and managers treat their people better and that's just the right thing to do. And second, empathetic leaders are better able to understand their teams, which is crucial to becoming a good influencer. Now being empathetic doesn't mean that you have to pander to emotions. It doesn't mean that you let emotions run your company. It doesn't even mean that you avoid hurting people's feelings. Being an empathetic leader simply means that you take people's feelings into account when you make decisions and that you take steps to address those feelings with a degree of compassion. To give you an example, when I'm doing an interview and I know someone's not going to be a good fit, I share that information with them before the interview is even over. I also ask them if they'd like some feedback so that they can improve. Now, when I give them the feedback, I'm honest and I'm open and I try to give them something that they can use to grow. And because I approach the situation with their feelings and their best interests in mind, most people thank me and many even subscribe to the YouTube channel or follow me on LinkedIn. The fourth quality on the list is integrity. You must have integrity and a strong moral compass to be considered a great leader. Integrity and morals are related to empathy, but they aren't the same thing. Empathy is about understanding and addressing feelings. So someone could steal your wallet, but still be completely empathetic about it. The fact that they apologize for it and feel bad doesn't change the fact that they took your stuff. Integrity and morals, on the other hand, have to do with your actions, not how you feel about those actions. Being a moral manager or a leader is about doing the right thing, even when it conflicts with your own self-interest. 
In fact, I would argue that the definition of right and wrong is really nothing more than if something benefits society or if it hurts society. Now, integrity is the willingness to stand behind your morals, even when it's not in your own best interest. To use a spin on the classic example, if you found a million dollars on the side of the road, would you report it? Well, the morality of the situation really depends on the circumstances. If you knew the money would be used for human trafficking if you returned it, then the moral thing to do would be to not return it. But if you didn't know whose money it was, the moral thing would be to report it. A strong demonstration of integrity would be giving the money back even though you're late on your bills. Now, the best managers and leaders are the ones that are willing to do the right thing every single time. The fifth, great managers lead by example. We've all known managers who live by the mantra, do as I say, not as I do. That approach just won't inspire your people though. Turning back to Elon Musk for a second, there are numerous stories about him sleeping at the Tesla plant during crunch time. He literally put a tiny house next to the factory and he puts a cot on the factory floor because he wants to be the one that experiences the most pain. And he wants to show everyone else what he expects. Notice I said show everyone what he expects and not tell everyone what he expects. If another CEO told their factory workers to work 50 hour weeks while they were out playing golf, you'd likely have a mutiny and TikTok would be blowing up. But since Elon is willing to do twice as much or more than everyone else, people are willing to go the extra mile. Now, whether or not you think 50 plus hour weeks are the right thing to do, there's no denying the power of leading by example. The sixth item on our list of great leadership traits is a strong desire to learn and grow. It's hard to be a great manager or leader unless you are at the top of your game. And since the game is constantly changing, you have to constantly learn and grow or you're falling behind. Plus, learning is like making an investment in yourself. The earlier and more frequent you invest, the more you'll get back from that investment. Plus, to be a great manager, you need a great team, and that means your team needs to have a growth mindset. And since we just established that the best managers lead by example, that means you should put a lot of your time and effort into growth. To give you some examples, CNBC reported that Bill Gates reads about 50 books per year. Tony Robbins took speed reading classes and read hundreds of books when he was starting his career. In his book, Be Obsessed or Be Average, Grant Cardone says that he doesn't send his people to training, he sends himself. And Inc. Magazine says that Warren Buffett spends up to six hours per day reading books. You don't have to go quite as far as Warren to be a great leader, but you do have to have that unrelenting thirst for knowledge if you wanna do truly great things. The seventh item on our list has to do with control. One of our core human needs is to have authority. Authority is a type of control that provides us a level of status and security, and that makes us feel good. But like we discussed in the first quality, bad leaders seek out authority and often abuse that power. And Tony Robbins and other enlightened individuals will tell you that if you focus too much on control and authority in your life, it will have disastrous consequences. The idea that authority is dangerous is also expressed in the saying, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Authority is dangerous because when people don't have to convince others, they don't have to think as much about the consequences of their actions and they don't have to get buy-in for those actions. Plus, when people are asked to do things against their will, they disconnect and will eventually revolt against the authority. To give you an example of what inappropriate use of authority looks like, I've known several managers that would lash out at people who didn't agree with their recommendations, either passively or directly, managers that would intentionally block progress because it might make them look bad, managers that would steal other people's ideas and present them as their own, and a whole host of other bad habits and anti-patterns. I've also seen managers that would use the phrase disagree but commit. That's basically saying do it because I told you to, even though you think it's the wrong thing to do. All of these examples stem back to an overdeveloped need for authority, which can either come from their core personality, their past experiences, or a lack of emotional intelligence. Now, a lot of average managers out there also think that delegation is the skill that they should be practicing. The problem is that delegation is a form of holding on to control. The manager maintains the authority and just has someone else do the work. Over time, delegation will kill engagement for the best employees, which causes them to quit, while the people that don't wanna take the responsibility will stay. That's why truly great managers set a clear vision, 
hire great people, and give their teams the freedom to succeed or to fail and learn from it. This approach of giving people control instead of trying to maintain control will have the opposite effect of retaining control. Your best people will thrive and will stay longer, and the people that aren't up to the challenge will leave because they won't feel like they fit in. And in my experience, about 90% of people will flourish when they're actually given the opportunity. The eighth key trait of exceptional managers is a long-term focus and determination. If you take a look at the previous seven qualities, all of them have a long-term focus. Determination is also the one thing that all self-made successful people have in common. Successful people set their mind to something and they stay with it until they achieve it. Sarah Blakely spent 10 years looking for the right business idea before she found Spanx and became the youngest ever female billionaire. It took Grant Cardone years to master sales before he started his own business, and even then it was a couple years before his business became profitable. Netflix was several years in and on the verge of collapse before they found the right business model and became one of the top companies in the world. And to share an experience from my own life, when I had cancer at 19, I crushed it because I was determined to make the most out of life. There are countless stories like this because achieving great things takes time, and most overnight successes take years. Even if a given business does take off in a couple of years, it's because the people behind it were building their skills and their networks for years before they launched. That's why the best managers and leaders have massive amounts of determination. And to maintain that determination, great leaders need a positive mindset. Mindset has more to do with success than most people realize. To demonstrate how much mindset matters, I wanna share a little bit more about my battle with cancer. As I said, I was 19 years old, and the moment I was diagnosed, I made a decision that I was going to enjoy whatever life I had left. If I died, but I enjoyed the rest of my life, I won. But if I didn't enjoy my life, I lost, even if I didn't die. It was that simple. A couple weeks later, when I had my first chemo treatment, the doctors gave me a staph infection. While I was in the hospital with a fever of 106 degrees and my hair falling out, I made another decision. I told the doctors that I wasn't going to be back for anything but scheduled treatments for the rest of my protocol, which was 14 inpatient hospital visits of either three or five days over the course of a year. The doctors and nurses didn't believe me and told me that everybody was back in the hospital within the first few weeks for complications. But I was determined and 100% certain. 12 months later, they finally believed me. By staying positive and happy and determined, I was able to do something that was unheard of. That's why great leaders go the extra mile to make sure they maintain their positive mindset. You'll see top CEOs doing things like meditation and journaling and mindfulness practices and reflecting on what they're thankful for and exercising, all to keep their minds in a good place. One of my personal daily practices is to surround myself with inspiring people or ideas for at least 30 minutes. That may be something in person or it may be through a book or an audio book or even a YouTube video. The best managers will also encourage their teams to adopt similar practices and will take steps to help their teams stay positive and energized. And quality number 10 is a bias towards action. It's easy to sit around and talk about what you should do. It's hard and scary to actually go do it. In fact, our biggest fear in life is that we won't be enough. The best managers set their fear aside and make themselves vulnerable. They plan a little and take action a lot. They know that in order to succeed at something big, you'll have to fail dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of times. Great managers know that everything has risk, but the biggest risk is in stagnating and not moving forward. You don't have to change the world to be a great manager or leader. You can be an amazing leader in your community, with your family, or even with a small team at work. All you have to do is set a vision, take action, create followers, and keep trying and improving until you succeed. If you agree with the ideas in this video, you're invited to check out the Minimalist Management Movement. We're a community of people just like you that strive to be great managers and leaders every day. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below to help others find this video too.